Hey everyone, welcome back to GDC Live. We're here in beautiful San Francisco. I'm your host for a little bit, James Montemagno, and I have my good friend, Mr. James White over here from the App Center team. How's it going, James? It's going good. Yeah, so you're gonna be coming out, we're gonna be talking about App Center, what the heck it is, what is and what was Hockey App, what game devs can use to not only start building their applications, but test, monitor, get crash reporting, yep. uh, and also take a look at that huge fragmentation, whether they're deploying it on Android or iOS, and that's a problem for me as just a normal app dev, is I go out and I release my app and my game, and I'm supporting 20,000 different Android devices yeah. all around the globe, and that's nearly impossible to do. So maybe first, can you kind of set a level here of like what is App Center yeah. itself? So um, App Center is really intended to help consolidate a lot of the tools that you need as a developer. Basically, once you've written some code and put it into a repository, uh, means to be able to get your app configured and built, um, testing your app, uh, getting it out to your users, and then just knowing how you're, the health of your app, monitoring it once it's live with crash and analytics, as you mentioned. There's a lot of tools out there that solve those problems, but now you're managing three, four, five, six, six different accounts to do all of that. Yeah. It's sometimes nice, and it's usually better of an experience when you can consolidate all that because then these tools can communicate. And that's really the vision we're sharing, um, not only with just game devs, but just app, app developers in general. Got it, and we, last, uh, yesterday we had Dimitri on talking about yep. Visual Studio Team Services, and he was showing how you can build some games there. Yeah. And it was kind of more about the actual DevOps part of it, yeah. right? So you think of Team Services, you have your work, your code, all that stuff. What is the overlap between App Center and Team Services? What's yeah. the relationship? So there? we definitely help help in that DevOps picture for sure. Um, but I, I would say the direct overlap is going to be build. Um, App Center and Visual Studio Team Services share that kind of common functionality. Um, and, and there's different use cases for both, depending on what your objectives are. Quick and lean versus a more hands-on configuration. Uh, but where I would say VSTS takes that initial, like you said, code, build, some of the work items, things like that. App Center kind of takes that and pa that's where the, the torch is passed to move on to the rest of those services. Got it, okay, so you can, someone for me, I could think of it as like essential services for my game or app, where I can yeah. use maybe one of them, two of them, or all of them, potentially. Yeah, yeah. we really yeah. wanted App Center to be a value add. Yeah. Um, and, and because we're trying to target everyone, um, we, we want to make it a service where you use the services that you need and you want uh, and integrate into the tool sets that you have. We built it very modularly. Now, it's our job to make sure our tools work well, that you're compelled to use all of them, but we want people to feel comfortable saying, hey, we're really happy with XYZ, yeah. we just need test. Great, you know, come and use App Center yeah. uh, and use that, use that alone for now. So someone today potentially could be maybe using, let's say you're building a Unity game. Yeah. You could be using Unity Build yep. and part of Teams, and then you have your game, and then you could do other stuff with it with App Center? Is that yeah, exactly. how that works? How does that and, work? And that's some of what we've done today. So uh, with Unity games in general, it's all it's all about the extensibility with like Unity packages, and, and App Center is just along that line. Um, Specifically with Unity games, we're going to be deferring to our V1 version of App Center services with Hockey App. Yeah. Um, but you, again, with Hockey App services, you integrate the Unity SDK or the Unity package, uh, configure it with obviously pointing at the app IDs, and you're up and running and ready to go uh, with the extra services. Uh, some of them actually don't even care, like test. Test and distri distribution largely just care about an app bundle. Do you have an app bundle that you can use? Great, you can start using those services right away, and it's very agnostic in that perspective. Got it. And I think even as a game developer, when I'm developing a game, I could be developing like a companion application. Yeah. Um, and of course my game, you know, could be Unity based, maybe mono game based or something else, you know, Coco Sharp, something, Coco yeah. CD, uh, essentially any of those. Or I could just be literally using iOS's core APIs for mobile, I guess, yep. as well. So, or even desktop, Mac OS, right? Yeah, yeah. Creating the, the games there. So, so what all does App Center support today? Like if I'm coming in as a new Yeah, let's see if this dev. start page, yeah. Oh, this is there actually neat. Um, so uh, really we try and try and cover a breadth and depth. So um, bringing, bringing App Center where you are. So iOS native, uh, Objective-C Swift, Java, um, for Android, and I think Kotlin to some degree as well. Um, obviously Xamarin apps covering that kind of wide, wide base, uh, UWP apps. Mac OS is in preview, but available Cordova, React Native. I'm still waiting to meet a React Native game dev here at GDC. Oh, I have not found one yet. Um, there may be someone out there. I think that's also the interesting part too, is when you think games, a lot of people think, 
this crazy 3D graphics, you know, your console-based games, but a lot of games that I play are the threes of the world or the uh, 2048s, you know, yeah. I mean, the, the more, not necessarily simplistic games, but, you know, games that are of different style that yeah. you know, are maybe just drawing to the actual canvas themselves and, yeah. and touching and using the core APIs that really it's just an app for Android or for iOS. Yep. Or in the terms of UWP, you're creating a UWP app that happens to be a game. Yep. So today, you could actually just build all of that, what I kind of mentioned, inside of App Center. Yeah, we're trying to create that flexibility. And, and okay. again, it's not all about just the big, powerful engines, but native applications. And App Center really is built for apps, okay. which games are a subset of that. Got it. And here, then, so if I was building with Mono Game, mm -hmm. I could, it's just a Xamarin app yep. and a UWP app, so I could build and uh, here, and then the same thing for Android iOS, and you mentioned some of the other ones, like tvOS. Yeah, yeah. Building a tvOS um, game. tvOS, we have on our roadmap. It's okay. definitely something we want to visit, yeah. um, but hopefully soon. Okay, cool. Could you kind of scroll down and what all is part yeah. of App Center? Because I know we've mentioned a few things, like oh, I'm building something, I'm testing them, but there's a lot to App Center, right? It's yeah. not just build test, it's a lot more. Of yeah, yeah, services. so we'll just kind of, we'll kind of go high up, and, and again, there's the idea of modularity, but there's also the idea that these services do start playing in together, but it's easy just to kind of line item the main pillars, you could say. Yeah. So, uh, build integration, uh, as you can see, VSTS, um, GitHub and Bitbucket are the repositories we support, all cloud-based right now, yep. uh, to where you hook up to those code repositories, you can configure builds, and it's really nice. Uh, push, your, push your code to those repositories, automatically configure a build and get a result. Um, makes Typically makes more sense with collaborative teams versus individual developers. You want to make sure that you have your branches and you make sure your branches build, you make sure your master branch builds, yeah. um, but it's nice to be able to have that integration um, and, and get that running. So you can see, you can configure on a branch-based basis, um, and have that continuous integration process set up. Um, test, test is always a fun topic for me. It's a, it's a really important space in mobile. Um, it, there's nuances with games, and we'll talk about that probably a little bit later, but the high level idea is, is being able to, one, write automation scripts to automate your app. Doesn't necessarily work as well with games, because um, yeah. most games are non-deterministic, and you don't necessarily want to explore the ability to bot a game. People don't yeah. like exposing botting for some reason. Yeah. Um, but usually, more so, the automation APIs from like Android and iOS, they don't know how to communicate with, say, game engines. So if you want to get that to work, you have to do a work on the back end. Got it. Um, but it can be done. That's half of testing, is writing automation scripts, because it's faster to aut write auto run automation than do it manually. It's also running on devices. So we've got uh, about over 4,000 Android and iOS devices in labs around the world that you can run your test scripts on. Okay. Um, but especially for game devs, they're not ruled out, because sometimes a valid test, and, and I'll show this later, a perfectly valid test is launch my app yeah. and just verify that it works. Yeah. Um, being able to just verify that your app is supported on the hundreds and thousands of configurations out there is is half the battle in many ways. Yeah, I remember, I mean, I've had a whole different slew of different Android devices as an Android user, and I've definitely downloaded some games where it just pops up, it's like, oh, this isn't supported, or it can crash, yeah. and from a, a game developer point of view, it's really hard to just buy all those devices. I yeah. mean, especially if, like me, I'm just a solo indie dev, it's going to be really hard for me to spend thousands upon thousands of dollars compared to like, oh, I can just throw it up on App Center and see yeah. it run really quick. Exactly. Yeah. And and you know, part of it is is maybe you don't um, maybe you don't get maybe you don't test your app with automation, but there's ways to validate things later. Yeah. Um, obviously once you've built your app it's usually good to get your app in the hands of people yeah. to try it out. So we support distribution as well and this is where the legacy hockey app services built into it if you're familiar with hockey app. Um, it's that idea of I wanna I have a close-knit group of friends. I've built my first revision of the game. I'm not ready to publish, but I want to get feedback. So maybe I, you know, I have my close friends and family that I want to send it out to, and they'll get an email and can start downloading and installing right away. Yeah. Android, iOS, UWP, all of that. Uh, you can also create public groups as well. So oh, cool. you know, someone like you has a Twitter following, great, here's my game. Yeah. Post it on Twitter, you can get that feedback. You don't know them personally, but you can start at least gathering followers and, and that's, users. And that's kind of nice too, because if you think of how you normally have to go through other channels, like, oh, I need to go to Test Flight for iOS, yeah. so, all right, I'm going to create a Test Flight group, and maybe I create you know, uh, uh, a registration page, or I need to collect device IDs, yeah. got to go through this process, and then every time I got to upload, it's got a process. Or here, am I able to just like take my iOS or Android app and just like just say go? Yep, How does yep. that work? The upload portal basically. Um, there's two ways you can really do it. One is that if you've got 
IPA APK, you upload it, um, create your distribution groups or select your groups that you've created, usually by email invites or again, public links, yeah. uh, and then send it out, maybe with some release notes. Um, there's also the ability, again, tying back into that integration, if you use the build service, you can actually trigger and configure the build to say, uh, on build success, automatically distribute, or from distribution, hey, use this latest build that I had and distribute it. So you can, again, tie these services together to be able to make a cohesive project stream. Now, you mentioned iOS. There is still some of that device management, but our portal and our tools will help capture some of that data. So you say, hey, this person's on an iOS device you don't yeah. have on your profile. Here's the, here's the UDID, re-register it, recert. Push now, out. now, what if I'm a, a game dev today, and I already, like, I already have my CI set up, so I'm already, mm -hmm. I'm building in maybe VSTS, or maybe I'm using Unity Build, or I'm using something else, mm -hmm. but I have my apps. Like, am I able to use these services? Yep, like these absolutely. Two so far? Again, like, it okay. just looks at the app, it just requires an app bundle. So as long as you've been able yeah. to build something, you can start distributing with yeah, it. Yeah, so there's nothing else, to, there's nothing to, in, that's what I want, is there anything I need to install into my app? Not with really? distribution, no, okay. um, to get it working. All right, or with test? Uh, with test, Iowa, uh, not necessarily. It depends yeah. on the automation framework you use. Okay. Um, but in general, not really. All right, cool. And then what other services do we have? Yeah. There's three so far, but I know there's a lot See more. See what's just the website's providing. So Crash. And this is where like this is also can tie into yeah. games. Like, you know, you've done your launch test, you verified your game works, but maybe you haven't been able to write scripts because it's not easy. This yeah. is where crash reporting comes in because testing is to help you find bugs and issues. Um, once you've shipped your game, and once you shipped your app in general, there's nothing more painful as a developer to just see one star review, the developer hates me, it doesn't work yeah. on my phone. You know, and this is where crash reporting comes in, and, and there's a lot of services out there that provide this, and, and, and we really, again, want to create that integrated experience. Uh, so you can have that as part of your app portal of just, this is the health of my app. Um, and we expose a lot of the stuff that you're going to need. Uh, stack traces, uh, crash, crash reports, um, in, insight on the app. Also things like devices affected, frequency, um, you can hook it up to your bug tracker, so you're using VSTS or GitHub. Hook it up to those services so it automatically creates bugs for you. You can prioritize them based on issues. Uh, and you know maybe you're not able to do test automation, but then you can say, oh, I'm seeing a lot of issues on this specific Android device. You can either try and prioritize yeah. or, or say, you know what, maybe this isn't a device I want to support. So kind of as a developer point of view, I'm able to kind of use some of these services, help me build a better application at the end of the day. Yes. Learn from my users what devices are, are yep. crashing because yeah, it may work great on my Pixel 2 XL, yeah. but it doesn't mean it's going to work great on a Samsung S3, for exactly. instance, right? So I would see that data and then I can prioritize based yep. off of it. And it's, it seems like it's integrating into my existing tools. Yep. Because you said that we already you already support Bitbucket, VSTS, and GitHub for yeah. building, but also you said if I get a crash, it'll automatically open an issue for yeah. me. Yeah, and That's I mean, really cool. App Center was built API first, so those are some uh -huh. examples where we've got some of the dot, like we've got direct documentation on like GitHub and VSTS to hooking up in those tools, but there's nothing saying you can't use like our APIs oh, okay. to hook up into other services as well. Yeah, um, and pipe some of that data. That's actually some of the stuff that we're we're looking. We we try and find unique ways to consume it ourselves. And you know, here at GDC, we have that PlayFab offer, and we've been talking with the PlayFab team to see if we can't. Um, collaborate more and use our APIs to say maybe pipe some of that crash data into the PlayFab portal. Oh, I see. That's yeah. something that they've been wanting to use for a while, and yeah. you know, let's have a collaboration there. Got it. Um, but one thing I also wanted to hit on is you know you said you can use Crash to get metrics and information. Well, we actually do have direct analytics built into our app. Uh -huh. Now, I would say it's going to build more as, as sort of a high level like business view. But you, you want to have that. You want to kind of have, have like a snapshot of the health of your app. How often your app's being used, how long, what types of devices, the sure. frequency, version adoption, um, and all of that's available with App Center as kind of a high level snapshot. Yeah, I know as an app developer too, it's, it's also good for me to be able to track, like, all right, so I've added four buttons for in-app yeah. purchases, you know what I mean? How many times are people tapping on something and then abandoning it, or how many yep. times have people added you know, a gem into their card, or is it just sitting yeah. there? How many times are people going to that settings page, and how important is it? And the very first thing I ever did as a developer, uh, an app developer, about six and a half years ago when I was start getting started was, all right, I have 10 different parts of my app. Yeah. What's in, like, what are people using? Yep. I think that's some of the, the, the quick learn, the yeah. quick win. And I was building some very like, heavy DVR applications early on, and, and I realized that, oh, 75% of my, users go to one section. Yep. And I'm like, wow, that section of the app has to be the best section because 75% of the people are there, where for me as a developer, I'm like, everything has to be amazing, right? Yeah. Well, they should be, but maybe I should really focus 
to really ensure that's a great experience. So it seems like I can use yep. this to really so gain that insight. Integrating the SDK, and again, with Crash and Analytics, it's just integrate the SDK and maybe one line to initialize. Um, analytics, you can do programmatic event tracking. So like you said, you know, you want you add new features, see so discoverability for it, you can yeah. start programming events um, to say how often. A uh, common thing with games, uh, you know, how often are people actually getting to our store, making a purchase? Or you could do something like, I'm making network intensive API calls. What's the performance like? So when you make the API, API call, internally start a timer. When the API call finishes, oh, yeah. trigger an event, say this was the time. You can add like properties in a, in a dictionary format to get yeah. more in-depth information into and, your app as well. And often in a game, you are actually already tracking all that time. I start yeah. a level, how long did it take me to finish? Yeah. What was the speed run time? I can go back and forth. Very, very, very possible. Cool. Yeah. Um, so last major feature we got is we're also integrating push notifications. Oh, cool. Um, this is built on the vision of uh, what Notification Hubs has. Sure. So this is kind of what the, we see as the next revision of what Azure Notification Hubs is doing. Um, Cross-platform push notifications. Very cool. Pretty standard being able just to make it easier to send targeted push out to users. And it seems like if you're using a cross-platform framework, then also you have a cross-platform SDK, I assume, that you yep. can do, or you have iOS, Android, You have iOS, Android, Android SDKs, but the API calls are going to be very, very similar, cool. working from similar portal. Um, you still have to do some of the registration on like APNS and Firebase, but uh, we help even automate some of that creation for you as well. All right, now I want, I want, you were showing me something really cool before we got on, which is the very second section that we talked about, which was test. Yes. And you said that, you know, one thing as a game developer that's important is to make sure my app runs and my game runs yeah. on different devices. So you said that you took an app, you yep. a game, you took a game and you just threw it into App Center. Yes. So. So maybe um, walk through what, what we're seeing here on the screen. Yeah. So this is this is the actual App Center portal, um, and, and what we've got here is our test service. And again, you can kind of see an overview of the different services broken down. Everything on the left. we just talked about. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Exactly. And and so this is test. And, and and I actually I literally set this up in about 20 minutes this morning because because I've been talking about it, um, and I wanted to just put the proof to the pudding and show it's there. So uh, this this game is a, a fork of the Unicorn Dash game from the PlayFab team, which we're showing here at GDC. So oh, cool. if you go to any of the PlayFab booths. You can actually play it. It's a really cool, like, it's one of those like carnival type games, or it's like these little horses on pegs, and you try and race across the board. Got it. Very, yeah, yeah. very fun and cute. Um, I obviously don't have access to a lot of in-depth knowledge on the game, but I have access to the build of the app uh, as we've been collaborating. And so what I did is I literally, I basically created a new Xamarin UI test template uh, in Visual Studio for Mac. Um, and then I this is just an Android app. It's just at an the end Android the day, app, right? and so I just had yeah. the Android APK. Brand new template. All the only code I added was I um, pointed to the APK so it would actually load the correct app. Yeah. And then I added a bit of a wait uh, just because the app has like a couple of loading screens of powered by Unity and do this. And I just wanted to make yeah. sure we got to our home screen to verify the app. So this actually is a loads. Unity game. This is a Unity it's game. A Unity Android game. Unity Android game. I just yep. pull, pulled the APK. Yeah. Not built. It's not even built inside of App not Center. Not built inside of App Center. It boom. took more time for me to actually. Uh, Figure, fill out the CLI and just wait for the test run. And I actually want to go back real quick. One thing that's worth noting, so I ran this on six devices. It was just, again, a quick, dirt, quick and dirty proof of concept of, yeah. you know, let's make sure this works. Um, six devices took 10 minutes. Yeah, not it bad. took 10 minutes to just launch my app and get this feedback back, but there's no reason why it can't be scaled out, and I, I intend to try that later today. Um, so you can see here, I, I actually just went into our tools, and I'll show how this is configured. But I just grabbed what is we consider some of the more popular devices right now. So you yeah. can see like Google X, Google Pixel XL, Nexus 5X, um, Highway P10, Samsung Galaxy S8. And so these are just actual screenshots of the game. And different versions of Android the different 7, versions of Android. 7, 1, 2. Yeah. So I'll show a little bit more of that later. But yeah, this is just, you know, this is just verification. I know I can be confident that this game at least launches on these devices. Yeah. Um, and, and that again, that's a real sanity check of just reassurance. And, and it's kind of cool because you have the device Chrome. Does anything happen when you? Can you get more information yeah. about this stuff? Yeah. So here? it's worth noting these are actual screenshots from these devices. So this is a real. This is a real yes. physical it, device. I, I think I have to read that. Yeah. A simulator. Yeah. But I think sometimes for me, I'm just like, oh, I'm just going to put on my emulator. I'm like that's good. You're saying this is a this is a real like Pixel XL sitting yep. somewhere. Yeah. In, in in some ways, we have done the kind of crazy thing and managed and purchasing and, and maintaining these you know 4,000 some devices but yeah you know digging in here's here's our pixel XL I get kind of a nice breakdown of it I can get details of the actual oh, cool. phone There's the device yeah um, one of the big things you can kind of see how much memory the actual app is consuming yeah um, which is interesting so maybe we're worried about memory performance and if the app's actually consuming too much well you can track that launching the game you know 400 megs 
not too bad. Yeah. Um, and then you can also break down to see how long it actually took to run the test. So it only ah, took cool. about 10 seconds, and most of that 10 minutes was probably spinning up the device, installing some of that configuration overhead of just naturally yeah. running a device test. Nice. Um, if in the case there were issues, we do expose logs and stack traces and test errors, so I can always check that out if I'm doing logging. Oh, yeah. um, one of the cool things that, that one team is doing, so we've got a blog post coming out about this next week, so, um, so stay tuned because they'll go in more detail, but actually the Minecraft team here at, at, at Microsoft, they're actually using our test service, and what they're doing is essentially a launch test, yeah. but then they just run a bunch of unit tests in the back end, and so most of their uh, test verification is through logs. Oh, I see. Um, so for us, it, this is the extent of what you'd see, but yeah. they're able to still run automation or more unit testing yeah. on devices that they maybe don't have access to. Because there might be a bunch of logic that you have, and you can just trigger that off through the SDK and, and yeah. the test runners. Yeah. yeah. So I'm really excited to have that come out because they're doing some really cool stuff. How would someone set this up? How, can we go through setting it up? I'm yeah. super interested. So test run on this side, uh, new test run. Um, and then we'll just, I'll do it to the configurations, and this is kind of where the fun begins. Ah, okay. Um, in that you can see as I kind of scroll through here. Look at all lots those devices. Lots and lots and of devices. Um, you can also filter. Um, Give me the oldest phone. I want the oldest, oldest phone. Oldest, let's see. OS versions. We're going to, oh, yeah. we're not going to try running, but we've got this LG Optimus 1 oh, yeah. running Android 2. There is it's probably going to run the, the game amazing. Yeah, we are probably the last person to have a device <laughs> like this. Can you see um, the, the performance on it? I'm just going to um, get that info button. Let's see what we got. Um, scroll around. Oh, yeah. We got that 320 by 480. 512 RAM, oh, 600 yeah. meg. That's the, that's what it reminds me of my very first smartphone. This is great. 2010 um, release. That's kind of cool because you can almost start to see, like, all right, how far back, not only operating system, but kind of date, time shot of when I am creating a frequently asked questions or supp officially supported, tested devices for my game or for my app, I can actually start iterating and put this, some of this information in there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, very cool. Especially if you have that memory usage and CPU usage. Yeah, you can actually so most on. likely with this bad boy, if you tried to run the game, I think it would crash. It'd be amazing. Um, re really good insight. But uh, but yeah, so, um, and, and one thing as well, well I'm going to deselect this because I don't want to, I don't want to lose my photos. Is it OS versions? Uh, take a look. Yeah, one look of the things as well, in terms of devices is, I always get asked, you know, um, how do you have this coverage? Let's just look at this 5X. Uh, so for the 5X Excel, you can see, you know, we have 8.0 and we have seven of them available. So if you know, that, there's, there's, there's breadth of them. of them to cover in case other people are using it. You know, but obviously we have a 5X running seven. So sometimes it's like, hey, let's see if there are any changes. I'm gonna run the exact same device. What happened from seven to eight? Is that okay? I've absolutely seen cases where apps have crashed on new OS versions yeah. just because of changes. Whether whether or not the device state, you know whether the device state is same, and we have these for iOS as well. Uh, iOS as well. Yeah. Um, right now, our app center is configured by apps, so this is going to look specifically in Android apps. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, but yeah, all of that's there. So we'll kind of jump back into the test run. This is actually the device configuration. I had previously saved this as kind of a smoke test group of devices that I wanted to use. I use. And what Sarah. are these things here? These test frameworks. Yeah. So we support a variety of test frameworks based on the apps you're using. Right. Um, out of the box. Espresso and XCUI test for Android and iOS, those are the native frameworks. And then you've got some cross-platform cross frameworks like Appium, Calabash, and Xamarin UI test. All right, so if you're used to, or you maybe already have some tests that are built in, yeah. you can just integrate them in. Yeah, exactly. And, okay. and, and, that's, and that's the key, is being able to integrate with some existing test solutions. Cool. Um, and so, yeah, clicking next, you'll see some configuration if you haven't done so. And this is really where the magic happens. Ah. Is it just becomes a CLI call. So um, just just uh, integrate, it to your, integrate it to your own DevOps process, or I just did it, again, from the own terminal on my Mac. So if you were using like either VSTS, or maybe you have some other you know, CI system, yep. maybe you're using Jenkins or something yeah. like that, or even Jenkins in Azure, for instance, yeah. so whatever you're building. Or if you're just on your computer at home. I can just run this command, shove it up there, boom, yep. and I'm going to have it inside. Yeah, it really, it really points to a lot of things. You can say, I've got my app, I've got my device set, uh, you'll point to the APK folder, and then you'll just point to wherever your test build directory is. And some of this will change based on the framework that you're using, yeah. um, but the concept is the same across so the board. So if I had a test team, does my test team even need to have the source code to do something? No, of they, stuff? Just need a bit, they just need that app build. Um, it's, all, it's all about just having that APK or IPA. Uh, and that's what's nice is, is it gives that test team that kind of more black box thing of being able to test from the outside, and then it makes the test more authentic in many ways.
Uh, what about, we got five minutes left, so what about some of the analytics part of it? You know, there was, you said, there mentioned some, there was some crossover between App Center and Hockey App. Yeah, so, so, so again, I wanna, story? Yeah. yeah, I wanna stick with the, again, the same Unicorn Dash demo that we're using. Um, again, Unity Games, App Center just came out last November as a GA, so we're still working on things. We haven't quite got Unity SDK support native in App Center yet, got it. which is fine, we'll get there. But you could still today use tests and, and distribute. Use that. And then um, if you're building with other frameworks, such as Mono Game or some of the other ones, such as the native yeah, stacks, yeah. good. So of course, there's a lot in game development that you yeah. could be using, and App Center is going to integrate more gracefully in some. But we're focused on Unity. Focus on some other ones. So yeah. like, so here again, here's the unit. This is the actual Unicorn Dash demo. I, I worked with the PlayFab team to get it because ah, cool. we wanted to make it so that we could distribute it internally at Microsoft and test our game before we demoed it here sure. at um, GDC. And so you know, here's that same Android app that I demoed. Um, you can kind of see some metrics. You can also see we kind of had an uptick recently. Um, but we also had an uptick on crashes. So ah. first of all, we'll just go. If you notice, there's kind of an uptick in correlation with when GDC started. Probably yeah. an idea of when people started using the demo here on the floor. So yeah. these are actual live results from GDC here today. Oh, cool. Whereas, you know, we maybe could have tested a little more previously. Yeah. Um, but also I want to just kind of point out, you know, this is where uh, analytics and things comes into play. You can see we also, we had a little bit of a problem yesterday and that we had some crashes. A um, little bit better today. It's a little bit better today. And what happened was, and, and this is an absolute 100% true story as I've been working with the dev on it, is we saw you know, a lot of crashes yesterday. Um, and we were able to dig in to these, these crashes and found that um, basically we, we had some poor networking conditions. For some reason, all these people using internet is making it hard to use the internet here at GDC. Um, and it was affecting our ability to do some of the network-based operations. Got it. So he was able to go in and literally last night write some updates to make, to handle some of that more smoothly. So, you know, put put the stuff in your app. It actually does work, and it, yeah. you know we're using it live right now. Yeah, um, and, you know, a lot of people think like, oh, do I need to track every little thing? And like a lot of times, my applications. I just spin up just the base analytics and the base crash reporting yeah. instead of trying to track everything. Like, oh, I already have my app out there. I don't. I just want to get a quick update out. Let me just initialize it, and I get a bunch yep. of stuff for free, essentially. That's all this you is. Know? I installed the Unity package, pointed it to the app secret just to, so that it would send data, and that was it. That and was we're it. getting all of this and able to make decisions based on that. Got it. Now, this is inside a hockey app, but you know, yeah. it says Try App Center. We were talking about App Center. So, what is, is there a migration path? What yep. does this look like here? Exactly. So I'm going to just scroll down here. So anyone who uses Hockey App today, Hockey App's V1, App Center's V2. Got it. Anyone who's using Hockey App, the apps that you're using there will show up in App Center. As you can see here, this is kind of, this is a subset of my there's apps. There's Unicorn Dash right um, there. Yeah. There's Unicorn Dash. So you can see like, this is the actual Hockey App app. It is showing up side by side. Right now, we don't support Unity. Um, but what we will do is once we get that Unity support in, I'll, you know, I'll pull up another one. We'll enable that data. We are porting that data side by side. So Hockey App users uh, today, uh, for, for native apps supported platforms, they're going to see the exact same data on Hockey App and App Center. And over time, as we get App Center to a more complete state versus what Hockey App is offering, yeah. we'll eventually start winding down the Hockey App service and just start pointing people and onboarding them more directly. But since we have all that data side by side, you'll get it anyway. So it sounds like today I'm a, I'm a developer coming in. If I'm using Unity, it sounds like we got a Unity SDK for Hockey App. Yep. All that data will come over, yep. but even if you're using Unity, you can still use the distribution, the, the test, test part of it that are there. If you're building with other frameworks, such as something core and just an iOS or an Android or UWP app, or a mono game or a Xamarin app, App Center is your go-to essentially. Exactly. It is a V2, it's ready, good to go. Yep. And we'll be adding more and more Unity support coming forward. Exactly. Now where do people go? Where do they go? So, uh, simple thing, uh, appcenter.ms. AppCenter.ms. Yep, free to sign up. Distribution crash analytics, by the way, completely free services. Yeah, how much does this thing cost? Yeah, yeah, so AppCenter, uh, in general, we've tried to make it as much as free as possible. So again, distribution crash analytics, you might as well get started. Let's see pricing, tap on there pricing. We, go. we got a minute. Um, Boop. There you go, free. I like free. free. So build service, yeah. if you're using some of the native apps, you can build up to four hours a month. Oh, Test, cool. we have a 30-day trial. For some reason, it costs a lot of money to buy a lot of devices, so yeah. um, it'll take some time. But again, if you're here at GDC, we have an offer uh, that if you sign up for Azure PlayFab and uh, App Center, you get a year free of, uh, of a test concurrency, oh, cool. which is about $100 a month of value. Nice. And again, to do launch tests, that'll cover your use case quite nice. And then again, whether you're in Hockey App or App Center, distribution crash analytics, it's a couple of SDK lines and just an app build for distribution. You might as well just try it and get started. Yeah. Push also is generally free right now. It's in preview. Um, there will be some pricing later for it, but it's still in preview, so it doesn't matter. Analytics, crash reporting, distribution, completely 100% free. Cool, awesome. James, thank you yeah, so much. Yeah, thank for you so much. It's great on. to be here. Awesome, well go check it out, appcenter.ms.
We'll be back in about 15 with more live from GDC.